Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to At Home with the Royal Butler and of course Shumba the Royal Dachshund. Uh, it should be the Royal Dachshunds, but Shumba is the one that seems to want to be in front of the camera all the time. So it's a bit of competition and even what's a dressing room now, can you imagine? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've noticed from your likes and your comments, you've enjoyed the episodes on afternoon tea. And I've shown you how to lay up the perfect afternoon tea and how to create the perfect tea station as it's used in some of the grandest and royalist homes in the land. And looking at the comments, you're now asking me things like, how do you serve the tea at the table? Can you put the teapot on the table? And how do you serve it to your other guests? And that's what I'm going to show you today with the assistance, of course, of the Royal Dachshunds. Okay, let's begin with the demonstration. Notepads and pencils to the ready. The first thing you're going to do is pre-warm your teapot with a little drop of hot water. And then you're going to swirl that round. And then you can pour that water out into your sink. And then what you're going to do is get your loose tea from your tea caddy. And what I tend to do is put a spoon in a teaspoon in for each person. So say you're gonna have a guest. So I'd probably put two teaspoons in and one for the pot. And then I will pour the water, the boiling water into the teapot. So once the butler has brought the tea pot into the room, or the staff, who it might be that does it, possibly even your partner, they could be a staff of sports, uh, or even your, your dashings or your dogs, if you can train them to bring the teapot in, that'd be quite a good thing if you could. <coughs> but anyway, whoever brings it in, they will then place it on the table and then the host or the hostess traditionally the hostess, but today it can be a host or hostess, will play mother, which is a very old term, and that means that you're going to pour the tea for yourself and the other guests. Firstly for the other guests, and then for yourselves. And that's what I'm now going to demonstrate. When it comes to pouring the tea, get the tea strainer, place it on the cup, get the teapot and pour the tea into the cup. Make sure that you don't overfill the cup Otherwise, you may need to offer your guests straws. And then remove the tea strainer, put it back into its little holder. As I've mentioned before, you get your slot bowl. If you've got more guests, then use a larger slot bowl. If it's only for one or two people, this is fine. And then you can add some lemon if you wish. The lemon has always been offered with Aero Grey, which is what I'm drinking, because it helps bring out the flavour of the bigamont in the Aero Grey. Or of course, you could add some milk if you wish. 
And I'm sure you know that it was very much a status thing to put the milk in after because the aristocracy would be able to afford the fine bone china, which could sustain the heat, and then the coolant of the milk could be added after, where the downstairs staff would have the clay mugs that were it was possible, potentially they could crack, so they'd have to put the milk in first. So it was very much a status thing for you to put the milk in after. So remember, the next time you're adding your milk, think like an aristocrat and put the milk in after the tea. You'll impress your friends. And then you're going to stir the tea. And remember, you're never trying to create a storm in a teacup because if you go around in circular motions, that's what you're going to do. So a very gentle back and forward motion is more than enough. And of course, if you wish to offer it, you've also got some sugar and make sure it's always sugar cubes. Here we go. There is my perfect cup of tea. And to enjoy this, I'm going to pinch the handle. I'm not going to put my finger through the handle. These are very old cups. And if I do that, I may find that I need to visit my local hospital to have my finger removed from the handle. So I'm going to just pinch the cup and then I'm going to bring it up to me and I'm going to sip we never slap. Hmm, delicious. And one other little tip is to remember, I'm gonna get rid of this myth. We never stick our pinkies up. We always keep the pinkies down when you're drinking your tea. If you put your pinky up, it looks like you're trying to test the wind direction, which as lovely as that might be, you do not need to do that when you're indoors. Hmm. And I should also mention the hot water pot is there in case you need to add some more hot water to the teapot or even to the cup if it's slightly strong. And if you're having a slice of lemon, you can add the hot water just to the lemon so somebody could have uh, hot water with lemon. And there we go. I hope that's given you a few ideas on the correct way to offer your tea to your guests. Shimba, have you? Shimba, did you enjoy today's lesson? Yes, he always enjoys the lessons. He's one of my best pupils, aren't you? Yes, he's one of my one of my brightest and one of my best. I hope you've enjoyed today's At Home with the Royal Butler. From myself and from Shimba, uh, we hope you stay safe. We will see you on Friday for our next In Conversation with the Royal Butler. I always keep asking, but please keep the likes coming in, uh, the comments, the ideas, the suggestions, loving the chat and the conversations. It's great fun to join in and see what you're all, what you're all discussing. And as I said, I love your ideas. Keep those coming in as well. But until then, thank you for watching and stay safe. Chin chin. Hmm. Shimba, this is really good. <laughs>